We're going to do the plugs, cap, rotor, and ignition wires on this 2000 Dodge Durango. And I'm going to show you how I removed a broken spark plug. I only allowed one hour to do this job as it should have been pretty easy. You can see here that the spark plugs on this V8 are easy to access. Well, in the process of doing this job, I broke one of the plugs in half. It took several hours to remove the broken part. You can see the spark plug has a heat shield around each boot. That heat shield stays in the cylinder head when you remove the plug. The distributor cap is located against the firewall. The cap is attached to the distributor with two screws. For ease of access, move a couple of assemblies out of the way. Pull up on this rubber mount and undo this electrical connector and you can put this assembly to the side. There's three mounting points for the air box. One of the mounting points is inside the box underneath the filter. Here is the coil on this vehicle mounted towards the front of the block. When I go to remove the air box, I just grab onto this positive crankcase ventilation valve, twist it back and forth and pull it out of the valve cover. To remove the ignition wire from the plug, grab onto that light colored boot. Twist it back and forth a half a turn until it breaks loose from the plug and then pull it off. I use two different types of sockets when I'm working on spark plugs. One has a rubber boot that holds onto the spark plug. It's useful when starting the plug into the first couple of threads and for when removing the spark plug from the last few threads. I use a regular deep well socket when I'm initially loosening a plug or I'm tightening it up that last few turns. When this spark plug broke in half, it left this part of the spark plug in the cylinder head. Before I went on to remove the rest of the plugs, I soaked them all in PB Blaster. Here we can see that the ceramic part of the plug is intact. It looks like a pretty old spark plug and the electrode is almost completely eroded away. I took one of the used plugs and put it in a vise and tried to break it on purpose and I couldn't do it. plugs in half with this cutoff wheel. I wanted to get down in there and take a couple of measurements and get a good look at what I was working with. Look how thin the wall is where the plug sheared in half. This looks like just the right opportunity to use a bolt extractor. I used a bolt extractor or easy out to remove that part of the plug. The end of the bolt extractor has a square shank, like a tap. I put a little duct tape on there to keep the socket from falling off. You can use a 12 point socket to turn that bolt extractor. Soak the part in PB Blaster and gently heat with a torch. Remove the easy out. Then, soak the part in PB Blaster and gently heat with a torch. Remove the easy out. Then, soak the part in PB Blaster and gently heat with a torch. Enough force to break this bolt.
bolt extractor, you'll probably have to remove the head from the vehicle to complete the repair. In between working on the spark plugs, I replaced the cap and rotor. The rotor just pulls off of the shaft inside of the distributor. The gray spot on top of the rotor may indicate arcing. Sometimes you can clean off these deposits on a rotor cap and use it for a little bit longer. In this case, all of the posts were really corroded. It's a fairly inexpensive part, it's worth replacing. You can imagine how this weather stripping being pulled away from the firewall would allow rainwater to dump right onto the distributor cap. I often find it much simpler to remove all of the ignition wires at the same time and move them out of the way when I'm replacing a distributor cap, rather than trying to transfer them from the old cap to the new cap one at a time. It's very easy to figure out where the new ignition wires are to be installed on the new distributor cap. When the number one cylinder is at top dead center on the compression stroke, the rotor should be pointing at this location. The distributor cap only goes on one way and has a mark on it that indicates where this number one plug is. This image shows us how the cylinders are numbered. This shows us the direction of rotation of the rotor inside of the distributor cap. Cylinders 1, 3, 5, and 7 are on the driver's side. Number 7 is the one that had a broken plug. Here on the same page we find the firing order. If we have the firing order, we know how the cylinders are numbered, we know the direction of rotation and we know where the number one plug goes. It's easy to figure out how to put the wires on. I find it convenient to draw this circle which represents the distributor cap and label it with the firing order. In this case, 18436572. Lay out your new ignition wires longest to shortest. Install the longest ignition wires first. In this case, the number one plug to this post labeled number one and then the number two plug to this post labeled number two, and so on, working your way back towards the firewall. This clip I broke. This clip I melted. Carefully route and secure your new ignition wires. I cranked the engine over a few times without the spark plug installed in the number 7 location to burp out any PB blaster that might have been left in the cylinder. good now.